Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to most high God. We celebrate you this morning. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, blessed Father. Good morning, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning, our Redeemer, our Savior. Good morning, our Papa. We say good morning to you. The women gathered here salute your majesty. We salute your holiness. We salute your glory. We salute your goodness to us, giving us breath this morning, Lord, keeping our heart beating. We salute you for all that you have done and for who you are. We salute your greatness. We salute, oh God, you, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who spoke a thing and it came into pass, into being. We salute you. So, so separate us from ourselves this morning. Separate us from our thinking, oh God. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. We we'll separate this call from every plan of the enemy. We surround this line with the blood of Jesus. We surround every woman in their houses with the blood of Jesus. We consecrate this time to you, Daddy. It is your time, Holy Spirit. It is your time, Master of the host of heaven. It is your time, Captain of the host of heaven, Captain of the heavens army. This is your hour. We give it to you, Lord. We give it to you. Our eyes are on you. We fix our eyes on you. We fix our attention on you. We fix our desires on you. We fix all that we are on you and we say lord let it rain let it rain let your power rain let your goodness rain let your healing rain let revelation rain ah daddy let your greatness rain daddy let your love rain rain let it rain upon us heavy this morning lord we are grateful that we are gathered here in your name in jesus name amen 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 amen, amen. good morning everyone how are we doing this morning Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So I'm going to give an opportunity to people. If you really were blessed yesterday, say one thing that blessed you. And uh, as we are preparing to get into prayer um, concerning the things the Holy Spirit has been teaching us, if you raise your hand, I will be able to see you. We're just getting for others to join us. Okay, Jasmine. And do I have another hand? Okay, please go ahead, Jasmine, Belly, and you come Kamaka. Okay, so we'll take three of you. Let's start with Jasmine. Um, good morning. So good morning. yesterday when you were teaching about Miriam and Moses and how he was going down the Nile and, and all the things you taught about that, the Lord was revealing to me specific people in my life that, that are assigned to me, people that I've had like affinity for and like been drawn to and had like protective nature towards. Mm. And it was just like, it, it made it so clear to me why these people are in my life, you know, to pray them into their destinies, to encourage them, um, to share what God has given to me. Like, like these are all like younger people, people younger in the faith, things like that. And it just, it just was like sweet. It was like, and he brought each one of them up and I wrote their names down and it was just like a confirmation of things and uh, an honor, you know, an honor to, 
to be able to pray certain people and cover certain people in, in certain ways. And just like Miriam made sure that no, uh, Moses was safe from the crocodiles and got fed and nurtured and things like that. It was, um, it just clarified a lot. Hallelujah. So thank you for that. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Clarifying a lot. That's what we said. Revelation is deeper understanding of current things that are already around you, but they make, I mean, the, it makes it clearer and it makes you, um, it takes you deeper and it makes you have current application. So in praying for those people now, just to get from what Jasmine has said, sometimes the Lord would use you for younger people, but it's not only for younger people. It could be for a younger generation. Now, the younger generation does not necessarily have to be younger than you. Still, um, the Lord has raised me as a Miriam. I'm raising the next generation of women of God. Some of them are older than me. But the Lord is causing me to raise them up as warriors. So I, I have that assignment. Sometimes the Lord draws me, draws their older women who call me my mother, not because I'm mother physically to them but they see me as someone who is nurturing them someone yeah. who's training them and so they give me that um they let me hover over them <laughs> i say you don't touch one of mine and that's that's how that's what a mother does so when you're when you're receiving that's why um ruth was able to go to naomi and say wherever you go i'll go you know that that's the mother thing that the lord can cause a woman who has become a mother to you spirit in the spirit realm to be in such a position of covering over you that the enemy wants to touch you he's afraid of how many blows will come to him so yeah just to add to that but the the miriam assignment is the younger generation you see that you see that clearly as we start doing the deborah deborah is for the nation deborah has a, a different kind of anointing her fight is for her nation and it's usually the older people miriam's has a heart for the younger people she has a heart for the next generation and she has seen them already in their destiny before they even get there you know so that's this particular thing with the miriam anointing you're able to see a baby and know that this baby is no ordinary baby this is a prophet this is a prophet this is a prophet who's going to save and deliver this whole nation so i'm ready to sacrifice my life for them so you begin to see great callings inside something that is so minute you're able to just see a seed there are people who are coming and investing in to our lives and ministry at a time when our lives and ministry was really no significant there was no we are not no international ministry but they are praying they are fasting they are prophesying they are doing everything like this was a great ministry now the ministry is unfolding and getting bigger now they are able to see their dream come true so as i said it's going to be a person it could be a person it could be a group of people it could be a church it could be a ministry it could be a uh, um I don't want to say a business, except your business is kingdom. It, you know, that you say that you're fighting for it, but mostly it has to do with people. So thank you, Jasmine, for sharing that. Um, so as we said, our goal this, 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 this during this time is to sharpen our understanding of what these mantles are so that you can teach other women. Hallelujah. You can help other women. Praise God. Next person, Billy. Good morning, everyone. Um, yesterday's teaching was exceptionally powerful. Um, one of the things that blessed me so much was the revelation of uh, the glory of God and it being revealed in dark times. And that uh, dark times being an opportunity for us to showcase what the Lord has stored up within us. Uh, the Lord has been speaking so much to me about uh, uh, not relying on his faithfulness as an excuse to uh, fall into, to just be lazy or complacent. And so uh, it was that stirred me up in the spirit so much because uh, the revelation that a dark times darkness is an opportunity for the light within us to shine. So the Lord is looking for faithful warriors who are going to 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 use those opportunities to uh, put His teachings to practice. Uh, that blessed me so much. Hallelujah, praise God, uh, and and 
dark moments, dark moments are going to come and they have to come. Now, I, I, want, to, I want to prepare us for some of the dark moments. I'm, I'm, and I'm doing Miriam just based on myself and my own. There are many different ways to see this, but every minister has to say from their perspective. For me, one of my dark moments is when I'm hurt or when I'm wounded or when I'm frustrated or when I feel like I don't have enough, um, I don't have what it takes. So those are dark moments for me. Um, but I want to read to you something. Okay, let me let our sister share and then I'll read this to you. Um, I'm trying to send this to Stephanie so you can all see that. Yes, please. Yes. Yumaira, please go ahead. Yes, um, I want to share about the revelation, you know, God uh I showed to me, you know, um why you were talking, or you know, I, I, it started even when we we were praying. You know about the uh, the revelation uh, using the uh, uh, scripture Ephesians chapter one chapter one verse seventeen, and I got even got up and got uh, my um, my diary where I write uh, I write my dreams. It, it reminded me of one dream I dreamt about children. You know where they were. Um, I had just this dream where a lot of children were gathered in a place. It's like um, they have a place where they were trained how to uh, wait on the Lord. Um, and they were having different encounters, you know, going to heaven and coming back, you know, you know, visiting heaven. They were all um, prophesying, speaking in tongues. Of course, and uh, um, you know, having dreams and visions. So in that dream, when I saw them, I was so impressed, and I started uh, uh, crying. It's like, oh, this is really um, a reality. And that dream, I had that dream in 2020. You know, but then, wow. even before this, Miriam, uh, uh, the median women, uh, <laughs> you know, getting involved in median. Uh, a women conference, a prophetic uh, uh, women, or, or before I had the anoint, this anoint we were prayed in upon. It's like God was revealing me such. And so he remind, that, at that time when we were praying, it reminded me about that dream. I went and got my diary and, and I was looking at it. And then um, also he reminded me about um, how I even called my sister in Nigeria and now, and I, I was I told her about um, um, this daycare children in, in daycare that we should teach them about how to be waiting on the Lord so that they will be having a, you know encounter with the Lord you know uh, uh, you know as in Joel uh, chapter two verse twenty eight you know that they will be prophesying and um, seeing visions you know and uh, I, I told them I told her, even my brother that. Um, has a church. I also was I told they called call my sister telling them about you. You know, it just kept reminding me, reminding me about how you know I was trying to get involved with training the youth, uh, you know, to also be waiting on the Lord. And they reminded me about this dream. I the post I made, I I I put about uh the uh God, how God revealed me about this fascination for the youth. You know how we will uh be praying. Uh, praying for them. And it, it's, it's a lot of things. It, uh, let me praise just God, praise God. Yeah, let me just stop, you know. Yes. It, it, okay. It's a lot of things to me. So it's like, oh, you are, this is, this Miriam is for you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Seeing and identifying the things that God has spoken to you, but now they become like your possession. Um, encourage Miriam's do find a way to start praying over children, take a list of children. We said that we will start gathering the list. I think it's Sister, um, what's her name? Sister Fumi, she's she's praying for minister's children. That's her call. Her call, she has a list of them. She prays for them. She fasts for them. She has this Christian Teachers Association. If you have a daycare around you and you're a Miriam, go and start praying over the daycare. Do a prayer walk around that daycare. Find mm -hmm. a way to expand your prayers, not just for your children. 
find a way to increase that capacity to carry more children on your heart. Hallelujah. To carry their destinies on your heart. As you do that, God is going to highlight to you who are the Moseses of that generation. He will highlight to you who are who are the um who are the Esthers of that generation. And then you start focusing on them. But please find a way to start increasing. That's how you activate the anointing. If you are called to the next generation, you must start investing into them specifically. Like, yeah, I have a day of fasting for children. I have a, a day of praying for children. These are the 10 children that I'm carrying on my heart this month. This month, I'm praying for these 10 children. This month, I'm, I'm praying over this, this daycare. I'm breaking the power of darkness over them. I am releasing them from, from, the, from the Luciferian agenda. I'm releasing them from the addiction to social media and to their phones. And you know, I, that's why you see, for me, the children always come to me in worship. They are always coming to me. I know it, it's by assignment. And these children see, they see and they know that I have an assignment in their lives. Children mm -hmm. are very very, very sensitive. So they flock to me always in worship. And my desire, I, I, you know, I pray over those children. I kind of pull out of their lives, whatever the enemy is trying to do. My, my jealous love is to make sure that they start well and that they start higher than we started. One of the things with Miriam is that Miriam has to be so, um, she is so passionate that the anointing of God in in the younger generation is stronger than the anointing in this generation. That's one of the things you have to have because if not, you will see them as a young, Miriam did not see Moses as a young brother. Even though we have that inst instance where she had trouble with, she was able to see Moses as a mighty. She was interceding, praying, standing with her brother. This was her younger brother, basically her baby brother. You could actually say that Miriam brought up Moses because of the age difference and everything. She, she was. It was like her baby brother, but she was not seeing age. She was not seeing that. She was seeing this man has a bigger call than myself, and my call is included in his call. So I will stand and do everything to make sure that this man succeeds. This little brother of mine, now it's no longer a little brother, is the deliverer of Israel, that he succeeds in his assignment. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things the Lord told Neville Johnson is that the older generation have a problem when God starts using the younger generation more than he used them. And they get very, uh, <laughs> I will not say jealous, but they get Disturb that God, you never showed this this way. No, we have to be prepared. God is mm. always working on an exponential level. He's mm. not working like he did before. I yes. have had dreams of little Cynthia. I mean, she was, I mean, flowing in the spirit, slaying people. I was just standing and looking and like, wow, Lord, this is all that I've prayed for. That these young people should work in powers of the age to come more than I ever did. And I'm going to do more than my daddies and my parents did. So that's how God's grace is. It's always going to be on an exponential way. So um, we, we have to be exactly praying for that. We have to pray that. If you don't pray that, you will be sore when the power of God in their lives is more than the power of God in your life. You know, if you don't, you know, the flesh is very tricky. You may think you'll not have a problem until it happens. <laughs> until it happens so the lord began to say start blessing all the women of god that you're raising up in the spirit so that their eyes may be open to see sharper than you are seeing mm -hmm. so that their their faith may become stronger than you are doing because that's how i'm going to work and unless you start praying into that when they start rising stronger than you you'll be like oh lord what happened no that's not our portion amen Amen. Miriam's, we got to be careful about that. So we see, we see when Miriam fell, Miriam fell in her short, in her short sightedness. We're going to see where Miriam fell. Praise God. Okay. Are you being blessed? Even those who are not Miriam's, are you being blessed? Amen. Yes. Absolutely. Praise God. Okay. So I'm going to read this, this story about Deborah. And it's in preparation for the next time for Deborah, but it's still in line with what Belly said, that we are supposed to, wait to rise up in the time of our sorrow and in the time of our woundedness, in the time of our brokenness and in the time of gloom. 
that is your time to arise. I cannot say it. I cannot overemphasize it. When the enemy says, don't fast, that is when you should stand up with and say, Lord, let the every hell, every power that you have, help me to do this fast. That's what happened for me this time. I've just come back from a trip and you know, the enemy was like, you can't do it. You can't do it. And my body was saying, don't do it. You cannot. This is being on you know you got to you got to pace yourself and the enemy was telling you all this thing not even the enemy i'll just say my flesh you know because that's really our greatest enemy and i was like lord what do i do i can just you know i can do it another time and i was reminded this is the beginning of the year do you want to start prophesying to your year that you're not going to you're not going to be in pace with what god is going to do are you going to start putting excuse before and I was like, I just held on to God. I said, Lord, give me strength for one more time. And and I'm excited anyway that the Lord saw me through last night. I was just really sleeping and just like, God, grace, grace for one more day. And he's faithful. So at your point of weakness, you remember the crown is going to be put on your head if you are faithful to the end. The Bible says he who overcomes to the end. He who overcomes. There are so many promises of, that are attached to our overcoming, but there is no overcoming if there is no wound, if there's no danger, if there is no, uh, there's nothing you're pushing against. Remember that as you go through the year. He's targeting you in your place of trial, but the Lord is also crowning you in your place of trial. So choose you this day what you want to come out of that trial. Now, let me tell you something about Deborah. Stephanie, if you had that, did you, if you received it, um, you can post it. If not, let me just read it. Um, my sister sent me this today and I was so grateful. I was like, oh, wow, what a prophetic thing to send. Okay, the wounded warrior. I decided to rest a little this afternoon and while I was resting, I had a dream and I know I have to share this dream. It was a battlefield. There were many female warriors of Yahweh. But before the battle started, the devil gave an order to all the warriors. He told them, while fighting, ensure you don't wound Deborah. So can you hear that? Ensure you don't wound Deborah. That's what the enemy is telling his people. Don't wound Deborah. Okay, now why? Why shouldn't we wound her? One of them asked. He replied, because Deborah fights best when she is wounded. I pray that is your portion. That is your portion. That the enemy has already, he has tried you many times and Amen. knows that, uh uh, no, don't. You know, the enemy looks for us in our weakness, but when he knows that your weakness, instead, you, the Bible says that they, Paul said, I glory in my weakness. Because when I'm weak, then I am strong. His grace is perfected in my weakness. So Paul had been able to manage weakness so well that the enemy is like, please don't wound him. Mm. Don't touch them when they are wounded. They are fiercer when they are wounded. They are fiercer against the enemy when they are wounded. I pray that is your portion. I pray that's my portion in 2023. I pray that I so yeah. master the ways the enemy constantly draws me down that he, he just backs off from using those strategies anymore. Hallelujah. When I woke up, these words, words kept ringing in my ears. Deborah fights best when she's wounded. Then the Holy Spirit shared a secret with me about ladies that rise in the order of Deborah. He told me that there are female warriors arising in the order of Deborah. When they enter the battlefield, the enemy usually, the enemy usually do his best to injure them badly so they will run out of the battlefield. But God in his infinite wisdom so designed it that every wound inflicted on them, <laughs> I say every wound inflicted on them, rather than making them weak and run out of the battle, energize them to fight better. That is your portion, my dear sister. Mm -hmm. Every every sickness that he put upon you, every, dis every bad news that he put upon you, every disappointment that he put upon you, may it energize you, Mali, Kola, Balaba. Let the, let the, let the yeah. wound just be on your flesh. Let your spirit man not be touched. Let the wound be an opening through which the spirit of God will flow. Hallelujah. Like it has never flowed before. 
Hallelujah. Please take that up for us. We are praying. I hope your spirit is being stirred because we're going to pray into this. Hallelujah. Um, okay. So I write to the female warriors rising in the order of Deborah. Since when you are wounded, it is not time for you to run out of the battlefield. Since when the enemy shoots you the arrows of heartbreak, it is not time for you to run to your prayer altar. <laughs> there you go. It is not time for you. It is not the time for you to run to, uh, run out. Sorry, sorry, run out of your prayer altar. Since when the sword of life inflicts you with the injury of persecution, betrayal, it's not the time for you to quit studying the word of God. Hallelujah. The word of God is the healing, is the medicine. My dear sisters, when you're afflicted, when you're pain, don't call your beloved sister the first thing to call and say, see what is happening to me. First, go to the word of God. First, hear from God. Just let the word of God be your first go-to. When you have read the word of God, you have prayed, then you can go talk to your girlfriend. Because, okay, we'll not go that way. When you are stabbed by the back, by those you love, it is not time for you to give up and refuse to continue fasting and interceding for souls. Hallelujah. I'm talking to all those who have given up fasting for America. It's not the time to give up fasting. It seems like we're answers. It's like we're just, you know, going against the wall, but it's not time for us to keep fast, to keep, quit fasting. Hallelujah. We are inflicted by all that is happening, but we're going to press on. The wound on you is a mark that you have been hit by the enemy, but it's also a signal to you from God that it's time to fight best. Hallelujah. It's a signal. As I said, it's a signal that crown is coming over your head. Crown is coming on your head. If I only press on to the end, uh, behold, the crown of life shall come upon me. They are wounded soldiers arising in the order of Deborah. Life is a battlefield for you. Whenever you see a wound on you, it's not the time for you to drop your sword. It is the time for you to lift up your sword higher. I said higher because you fight best when you are wounded. Okay, and then we have the details of those who already did. So we give them the credit for that. Amen. So I, I guess she's going to put this up on the on our on our group and you can use that to pray hallelujah you lift up your sword higher when you're wounded i want us to just pray into this revelation because truly if we 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 adopt the attitude and uh and the culture of i i shine better in gloom brethren there will be so many so many attacks the enemy will give up he would just not try anymore he will not try anymore it's because he has proven with time that the best way to shut you down is to turn off your light he turns off your light around you with the people around you and guess what the lord god knows that you shine as a star better in darkness that he stars the moon shines better in darkness we shine better when there's darkness around us. So let the enemies turn it off your light, your financial light, turn it off your emotional light, turning off your physical light to sickness, not be the reason why your inner light goes off. Can we pray into that? Hallelujah. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> 
Thank you. 
I'm going to ask three people to pray. I'll ask um, Sister Liz Mack to pray. And uh, I'm going to also ask Sister Noel to pray. Hallelujah. Um, the Bible says in Zechariah 10 and uh, verse 4, one of the reasons why we must stand strong in persecution and in, um, in times of darkness and affliction is because of the children. I want to assure you they are copying you. They are copying the way you behave during times of trials. If you're Miriam, your whole life is a school for these children. Your whole life is a model. They are going to do exactly like you do. One time the Lord told me that, Elizabeth, would you continue, you know, being like this? You know, the children are copying you. If something goes bad and then your face shows that everything is bad this is how these children are and then you ask them why do they have attitudes you have the attitude you're the one bringing the attitude you're the one teaching them the attitude we must fight those things that are not representing the lord jesus christ in our lives even if it is for the sake of these young ones that you are mentoring for their destiny they cannot carry the same sins and the same weaknesses and the same shortcomings that you have you are creating I call Miriam, they are keen makers. We are keen makers. That's what it is. You carry in your womb the destiny of kings. And therefore, you must produce an environment where the king becomes a king. The king knows how to fight. The king knows how to decree. The king knows how to stand against opposition, against the command of the of of. of, of against the command of the king, because he's bowing to King Jesus. It was because Miriam and her mother were able to defy the order of the king to kill all male babies that Moses was born in an environment where he says, I will stand against the king's order. The king says that you are not leaving, you're not going out of Egypt. And I say that we are going. You know, the Pharaoh said that, no, by no means am I letting you go. Moses said that you will let us go. <laughs> Why, where had he learned that? In what womb had he been, been created such a sternity, such a resilience to fight against an order of the highest order of nature of, of his environment? It's because he had seen from his mother. He had seen from his, 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 his sister who had become a mentor or covering over him to, to know that we only answer to the king of kings there is only one authority the king of kings and she had seen how his own whole life was defiling the order of king pharaoh his whole life was defying the order so we are going to pray i want these two people to pray noel pray and uh this elise mark will pray and we'll call Father God, we bless you for these revelations. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you in the name of Jesus. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you inscribe in our hearts, Father, that we fight best when we are wounded. Inscribe, inscribe in our hearts, Father God, that word in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus. 
Father, that we will start right now identifying, Father, those areas, those children, those youths, those those ministries that we should carry, that we should guard in the name of Jesus. Grant us each and every one of us, Father God, to put into practice what we are hearing today in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, that you, 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 you help us in the name of Jesus to identify those areas that we must invest. Oh, Father God, in birthing those children, in, in hovering over those children, over those these, these youth in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, oh Lord God, that we, shall not, we will not deviate Open our eyes to identify, oh Father, with the areas where we are hurt, the areas, areas where we are wounded in the name of Jesus. And grant us not to deviate. Grant us not, Father God, in the name of Jesus, to drop. I pray for commitment. I pray for commitment in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus that these words will not fall in the in a, in a, in a, in a, in a ground where it will not bear fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for this revelation, and I pray that they will prosper in each and every one of us lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Raka seke ni mako sakara baka goro bo sheka rebeke sekara baka goro bo sheka da 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 O ka seke rebeke sikara baka goro bo sheke da 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 Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for your revelations, we thank you for your truth, we thank you, oh God, for your word that goes straight into our spirit this morning, oh God. Father, we declare that we have a generation that we are teaching, that looks upon us, that looks unto us. In the yes. name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we declare that our facial expression, our attitude, our behavior towards you, towards the things of God, towards the purposes of God, oh God, will be teachable moments for this generation that looks to us. In the name of Jesus, we declare that we will teach them, oh God, how to defy the orders of this world that do not align with the scriptures. We will teach them, oh God, how to refuse the orders of the king that do not align with the orders of the king of heaven. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by our own attitude, grant us to watch, grant us to watch, grant us to see and draw teachable moments, oh God, Father, that we will give to these children, to this generation, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray, oh God, that at this moment we will grasp the fact that you have a signal for us, a signal for war, a signal for battle, oh God, when we are depressed, when we are cast down. Down, oh God, when we feel overwhelmed or burdened, Father, we pray that the staring will come yes. up, oh God, as a signal to wage war, as a signal to battle, oh God, as a signal to stand in the place of warfare in the yes. name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we pray that this will be a staring in our spirit, oh God, awakening in us, Lord, to this new revelation that you're showing us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for every woman here. I pray for those who are connected in spirit who cannot join. Father, that this will go out as a revelation, Lord. And in the name of Jesus, things will begin to change in our midst. Things will begin to change among us. Father, among the children that look at what's in church, in our administration, positions of teaching, positions in the neighborhood, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our children's friends, oh God, those that we mingle with, in the name of Jesus, there will be a high alertness that an antenna, Lord, will rise up in our spirit to show us, Lord, teachable moments, to show us moments to teach. Father, we would expand it, oh God, beyond our children, Father, to their friends and those connected to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Teachable moments. That's one of the things we will be practicing as we go on. Miriam's, we will be saying, giving ourselves to give suggestions. There's a time when we will be able to group this, these calls into Deborah go to one room, the Miriam's go to one room, the Anna's go to one room. We're going to have conferences like that where we would now strategize how do we effectively raise this next generation. And with all your input, we will have a greater strategy because as military people, we got to have strategies. As our sister was praying about teachable moments, I remember, I think it was um, a few days ago, 
Emmanuel, my son, was, I was taking them to school and he's like, mommy, how come you have so much energy early in the morning? <laughs> he's a young child who's like, I'm dragging my feet to go to school. And mommy's like, yeah, you know. And I was like, where did he see the energy? It's just because I was so full of joy and so full of life, life is equal strength, you know. So anyway, I told Emmanuel, I asked the Holy Spirit, what should I say to this child? Why am I so full of energy? And I told him, I say, I got a mommy girl up at 4 a.m. and I've been eat, reading the word of God for almost three hours. And the word of God is real food. That is that is manna from heaven. And so the, the strength I have is supernatural strength. Normally, I should not have had such strength when I just came back from a trip. And I am waking up early in the morning to drop you. But because I have fed on the word of God. And he was like, Wow. That is real, really true. I mean, like he was surprised because he not so teachable moments in your life. These children are watching you again. Remember, Miriam, you're a king maker. The whole thing. Sometimes I, there are dresses that I love to wear, but I cannot wear them because I know these young girls are going to copy me. And when they copy me, they're going to do worse than I do. So I'm not going to wear a dress, a suggestive dress, not because I'm not comfortable in it, just because I know that they are watching me. And when they watch me, if I, if I allow something for myself, they are going to exaggerate it. <laughs> so I better not do it at all because of the, there are confines that come when you're nurturing the next generation. There are restrictions that come on your life. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 10, verse, um, verse four. I'm going to read that. Stephanie, if you can have that, but let me read it. So we have, we have a few more topics to pray and time is just rushing. Okay. From Judah will come the cornerstone, from him the, the tent peg, from him the battle bow, from him every ruler. Hallelujah. I want us to declare that every ruler in our generation is coming from us. Hallelujah. Every ruler. The time can the Lord say that from Judah, from them will come the cornerstone, from them the peg the tent peg from there the bow of battle that is with the weapons from them every ruler all of them together is coming from us those the warriors we are the birthing place of every warrior hallelujah they will be as mighty men that is your portion mighty women of god treading down the enemy I love that. I want you to prophesy these things into your life because you are only as great as you declare with your mouth that you are. You're only as dangerous as the enemy hears that you're saying that it's not what you're thinking in your mind, in your head. It's what you are saying to the enemy. I am a very dangerous woman for you to even mess with me. And this is what the word of God is saying. I'm not telling you some things that are wishful thinking. I'm just saying what the word of God is saying. And I truly have chosen to believe the word of God. I truly that you have chosen Mishka to believe all of his word, all of his word. Just take it as it says. It Amen. says that you are a mighty woman treading down the enemy in the mare of the streets in battle. We are treading him down in the streets, not in our homes. Ah. I said in the streets. So we are meeting him where he is. He's not in coming down into our homes before we tread him down in our homes. I love that passage. I said, Lord, the treading of the enemy shall not be inside my home. I will tread him in the streets. So he has no, no even chance, no way to find a road to my house or to my brother's house or to my sister's house. And they will fight. The Lord will be with them. Hallelujah. They will fight for the Lord, for the Lord, Yahweh, the Lord of the hosts. Yes, the one with whom not the king of heaven's armies will be with them and the rider on the horse will be put to shame. I have come to declare to you, my woman, my daughter in the Lord, my sister, oh fellow warrior, the enemy will be put to shame. No matter what his name is, whether it be sickness, disease, poverty, death, the enemy will be put to shame. This is our confession as we start 2023. This is our confession as the end time warriors. The enemy will be put to shame. The horse, the rider on the horse, that is the system that is pushing this demonic agenda on our children. It will be put to shame. 
I will strengthen the house of Judah. Hallelujah. That's who you are, the house of Judah. I will save the house of, 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 of Joseph. I will bring them back. Hallelujah. Because I have compassion on them. And they will be as though I never I had not rejected them. For I am the Lord their God. I will answer them. Hallelujah. Can you hold on to this throughout this year? He says, I will answer you. Hallelujah. Ephraim will be like a mighty man. That is our children. Now he's talking about Joseph and the children you speak to your children you speak to those you're mentoring you'll be like a mighty man and their hearts will be as glad as from wine indeed their children will see it and be glad this is where i told you that you are an example to your children they will see Ephraim being a mighty man they will see Ephraim's heart being glad and there the children will see and be glad so guess what? They are seeing who you are. They are seeing what you are, how you are reacting to situations, to, um, to correction. They are seeing all of that. I want to pray that they will be glad when they see your attitude to adversity. Their hearts will rejoice in the Lord, not rejoice in the toys or the things that we give them, but that their hearts will rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll whistle for them to gather them together. Hallelujah. We'll stop there. I will whistle the, from, from different nations. The Lord will gather them together. In April, we are having a gathering of a school of intercession. Pastor Bahati will be coming. We are not, we, um, we had canceled the median conference, but we have Pastor Bahati coming to do a school of intercession, which was one of the things the Lord, I mean, Prophet Sadhua told me, if you can gather your intercessors for Pastor Bahati to teach you how to intercede, um, it will be great. So I was so happy that she was um, available for us to use that time, which we had set aside for the median conference to have a school of intercession. We will be raising a gathering of intercessors, the gathering of the watchers over America's destiny. Hallelujah. So Deborah, you cannot miss this, okay? We, uh, we are not missing this for anything. Wow, Stephanie, you are fast. You already pulled us out. I'm just saying. That. So the school of intercession is going to be from Wednesday. We'll be praying in the White House. We'll be praying in the Capitol. All of those places should be teaching us what prayer works is, what it means to uproot um, the powers of darkness in high places. Um, so please, you don't want to miss that. The school of intercession. Hallelujah. Save that date. We'll be Kevin giving out more information um, for us during that time. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay. So Stephanie, just put those slides quickly. We're going to pray and break bread shortly. But let me put the slides to round up the medium, Miriam anointing. And uh, I, I think the Lord has spoken very clearly to us. And, and as you dig deeper, with deeper understanding, you'll be able to know how to use your mantle. Deborah, I mean, Miriam, her mother, and her found that Moses was no ordinary child. That's what we said yesterday. That because I produce after my kind, I am no ordinary woman. If I'm raising a no ordinary child, I am no ordinary woman. Miriams must start with seeing themselves as those king makers, as creating the environment where this prophetic generation will grow. There's no prophet that is rising up without a prophetic home. <laughs> Moses was birthed in a prophetic home. First, his two parents, Levi, were, were of the Levites. So it is, it is that you are set forth to create that environment. Hallelujah. So I have extraterrestrial. This is what the Lord was telling me yesterday. It was so good. I have extraterrestrial powers, and that power is the power of the Holy Ghost. I am no ordinary woman. <laughs> I want you to say to yourself, I am no ordinary woman. I have extraterrestrial powers. I have an extraterrestrial palace, which is the kingdom of God. And I have extraterrestrial peace. When the Lord gave me these three pieces, he said, Elizabeth, confess this every day. You have extraterrestrial powers. So when the power of darkness comes, you just call on the extra, the powers from outside this world. You have an extraterrestrial palace. So you have a dwelling place, which is the secret place of the most high God, where you can go and hide from all the plans of the enemy and be fed and be nurtured and be renewed and be rejuvenated and be, hey, and you start shining with glory, extraterrestrial palace. And then I have an extraterrestrial peace. The Bible talks about the peace that passes all understanding. Hallelujah. So that when, when people look at you, how could you go through this? 
and nobody is able to able to tell you went through this without a scar you went through this and your clothes are not smelling smoke you went through this fire and there is no evidence on you because your joy was not adulterated your love was not affected that is our portion that is our portion as medium women hallelujah next slide and then we're gonna pray into this Lord, help me to see the goodness of God in me. You see, this, the, the other precious passage that said, I am a goodly child. No, it says that I saw that this child was a goodly child. I saw that this child, the Lord was teaching me about seeing good, his goodness. The Bible says almost seven times in the beginning, God saw that it was good. God saw that it was good. That is one of the habits that you must have and culture about your, your godly nature is the ability to see good. Because the enemy has so twisted our image that we don't see good. We are so, we can so easily see what is, sh is short. You know, Miriams, we have to be very careful because of the grace in our lives. We could be so critical. We could be people who are easily finding fault. That is the weakness of Miriam. Miriam found fault with Moses when he brought this woman, which was wrong, but she found fault because she did not see that God can turn it out for good. So she did not let the situation to be handled by God himself. And another thing, so she had her short-sightedness in all this, her gifting. When God has blessed you with gifting, you have to be very careful because it's easy for you to be critical with other people. It's easy for you to be critical and impatient, intolerant with the mistakes of others. Very, very easy. So when God has blessed you, you're multi-talented. You can do many things. You can, you know, which most of us women, warrior women are. We have ability to do so many things. Now, let me see your patience with another sister who is not going at your pace. Let me see your patience with your husband. Let me see your patience with your children. Let me see your tolerance when the church is not going the way that you think that it should go because you have sinned. So Lord, help me see the goodness of God in me. First of all, his goodness is in me because I'm part of everything he said, it is good. So there's goodness in me. I should stop seeing that, Lord, I wish I was this. I wish I was that. I wish I had this. No, you, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. One day we'll deal with that little demon of low self-esteem, cast it out so God can use you. <laughs> oh, may you see the goodness of, good, of God in nature. Hallelujah. Miriams are praising God constantly. You see the birds in the air. You see the sky. You're writing songs about nature. You're composing songs about his goodness in nature. Hallelujah. You see the goodness of God in men. Hallelujah. And we missed that one. In men, in the people around you, you see goodness. You see goodness. This person is so good at this. You must be raising up that, you know, that spirit of God's goodness. You see the goodness of God in his word. And you see the goodness of God in your circumstances. Hallelujah. In your circumstances. Because the Bible says that he turns everything around for his good. Hallelujah. Everything will work together for his good. For the good of those who love the Lord and accord in according to his purpose. So you're praying and say, Lord, I want to see your goodness in this circumstance. Lord, as I read your word today, let me see your goodness. Lord, as I interact with my friends today, as I interact with my teachers, as I interact with my employers, let me see your goodness. Lord, as I drive through nature and I walk through, Lord, let me see your goodness. Lord, I want to be a person who is just like you did in the creation. Every day, every minute, I saw that it was good. The last slide as we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Miriam short-sightedness. When the child grew and became big, when the child grows and becomes bigger than me, the Bible said to Miriam, were you not afraid to speak against Moses? This is no, this is no longer the baby that you raised. Were you not afraid to speak against Moses? Our prayer is that when the Lord raises us up and uses us in the lives of the people around us, we will not become so familiar with them and think that ah, because God has used used me, I have the right to say certain things. Were you not afraid? Were you not afraid? Hallelujah. Were you not afraid? This is no ordinary man. I speak to you through visions and dreams, but Moses is face to face. So there's a different day ranks for me to be able to observe my rank in the Lord and know that the person that God has called me, even though I've invested into their lives, I've been part of, of, of raising them up in the Lord. It, it's not the same thing when the child grows bigger than me. 
Number two, when the decisions are made out of my comfort zone, you know, it was totally out of her comfort zone. Some people say that because Miriam was not married herself, she was opposed to Moses. I don't know if that is true, but those are some, some theologians say that that was one reason why she had that problem. Now we don't hear anything about Miriam's children, so we don't know. Um, but that, that's what some people say. So it was out of her comfort zone for her brother. Not only is he getting married, but he's marrying uh, an um, um He's marrying out of the covenant, an Ethiopian woman. He's marrying out of the covenant, the Kushites. He's marrying out of the covenant. So the brain of all of that, when the things, decisions are made out of my comfort zone. So I say, Lord, enlarge my comfort zone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, enlarge my comfort zone. May give me room to be able to say, it's okay. It's okay. It shall be well. My husband used to say all the time, it shall be well. I'm like, what is well? You, you, we, this, there's nothing well here. But now I realize that truly it is well. It's just that my own thinking was too small. Grow in the inside of you to accommodate all the ideas and opinions that are not in line with your own opinion. That is the grace that Miriam has to develop opinions that are outside my opinion how do i handle them how do i handle them how do i manage my emotions around them how do i costume there so that i am still representing the kingdom of god i am still respecting ranks i am still acting in joy peace righteousness when the, i am out of my comfort zone hallelujah have you been blessed Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. Kali and Abashi Halaba. If you have the elements of breaking of bread, Hallelujah. Today we are going to declare the victory of the Lord. Kalande ya salanda ya talabasi. So these these messages would be um, recorded and you can go back and listen to them. I was rushing through. I'm hopefully going to make some videos and finish up the training and put it out there for those who want um, the Miriam anointing. I just thank the Lord because He told me invest into this and you'll see me open up more than just what you received. And that's that's true about everything that you give to God. Once you commit to it, he will multiply it in your hands. Praise God. Sister Catherine, can you pray for us and thank God for this, um, um, what the Lord has taught us. Just thank God and commit us to be faithful stewards of the truth that we have received. And um, Hallelujah everlasting father we thank you for being with us throughout this teaching we thank you for your daughter dr elizabeth that you have used to impart this great wisdom into also god almighty you broke my heart as the message was going on because i have seen the weaknesses that are in me Lord, I commit every woman that is here, oh Father, listening to this message. You touch our hearts, oh Lord, to surrender to you. And know that we cannot do this. We cannot become this warrior woman. With Deborah and Miriam, oh, we on our own accord. But when your hand is leading us, we will make it. Amen. But I transform us to these women. Your word makes it clear in, that the Lord walking with them, and they were able to do signs of one. Bakuria habashia makaseya lekoma saka tosho so fara. Oh mighty God, I from today will never be the same. Oh rakasike yemekosheya. You know how best to touch us and transform us and lord all i can say is let the blood of jesus cover us let the blood of jesus pro protect us let the blood of jesus empower us over oh, to be this warrior women thank you lord for answer to prayer in jesus mighty name amen amen amen, amen. 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 hallelujah Get your elements of breaking of bread and we'll do that as we close and thanking God for this fast. 
Today, we want to break bread. You're committing and presenting your whole year before the Lord. You see, the Bible says that when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The Lord told me that every time you break bread, you're raising that same covenant. You're activating that same covenant. So you're going to speak over the elements of breaking of bread because it is a vow before the Lord. You're saying, Lord, as I take this blood, as I take off your cup, and this is the, the, the Passover, the covenant, let every sickness pass over me. Throughout 2023, me and my household, sickness shall pass over us. Um, calamity shall pass over us. Um, destruction shall pass over us. You are speaking forth the word of God. The Bible says, when I see the blood, it is that covenant for us as well. It is the Passover. It is a declaration that death has already taken place in this house. So there is spirit of death. You cannot enter here. Death has already taken place. And it's the death of the innocent blood of Jesus Christ. That speaks better than any other, any other thing. That blood, once it's on your house, once it's on your house, as you take of this inside your house, you're declaring that death can no longer enter your door. Hallelujah. Spiritual death cannot enter your door. Emotional death cannot enter your door. Financial death cannot enter your door. Physical death cannot enter your door. To Today, as we take bread, we are sealing our homes from the spirit of death in all its forms. And we are speaking that this blood, which is the blood of the new covenant, is releasing the spirit of life. Hallelujah. It's releasing abundant life to flow through your life, through your family members, through everybody connected with you. Let every dead thing begin to live. Hallelujah. So it's a twofold sword. It's a sword that keeps away death, but it's a sword that releases and stirs up life inside of you. Let every dead thing, I'm speaking, I'm going to pray as I break bread, as we pray over this bread, that if you have any infirmity, be healed in Jesus' name. I am speaking for the life of God. Lord, I bless these elements today as we take in obedience to you and to your word. You say, whenever we gather, we should do this in remembrance of you, Lord. Remembrance of what the judgment that the cross of Jesus brought. It brought judgment to sin. It brought judgment to disease. It brought judgment to the works of darkness. It brought judgment to the systems of this world. Lord, we declare and activate by faith the power that is in this blood, the angels that are released, oh God, on the Passover. Hey God, let them be upon our doorposts today. Let them be upon our families today. Let them show forth the blood in the spirit realm. The blood, the enemy begins to see the blood and kids, enemies, kids, armies begin to flee from you. As I release the blood of Jesus, the power in the blood of Jesus, I curse every female related problem. I curse every cancer. I curse every fibroid. I curse endometriosis. I curse problems in the womb. I curse problems with your eggs. I curse problems with your fallopian tube. I curse every hormonal disorder in the name of the mighty Jesus who died so that you stop bleeding. I command that abnormal bleeding to cease. I command that barren room to open in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we take off this life, the life of your very son, we activate the healing power. Let it flow from our spirit, man, to our souls, to our bodies. Let the life of God flow like never before until we know the abundant life that he died to give to us. Bless the bread and bless the wine. And as we partake, may we experience being made into a new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. Please partake with joy. Amen. 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 Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. May God bless you. Bless your fast. As you break your fast later to in the, during the day, may the Lord strengthen you and make you an example to the next generation. Again, even if you're not a Miriam, you must be an example. The Bible says we be an example in speech, in action, in conduct. We are leaders. So be an example. Hallelujah.
um, those who we are going to the mountain to Pastor Bahati um, um, in, in Tanzania, second week of February, if we have the flyer, it is out there on the, so Doreen, are you coming? So we have a couple of sisters who are going to pray in the mountain. I'm hoping to see the face of God on that mountain. <laughs> so please, if you want to join us, it's getting a little really close. That's why we arranged for Pastor Bahati to come and do the school of intercession because many people could not go. It was cutting, it was very close and uh, we, we made the announcements a little late. So if you can still join us, um, February 9th to the 12th, it's on the you can, you can get the information. You can contact me for uh, more information about it. But we have already bought a ticket, so you just have to find your own path. It's uh, it's kind of already too late because it's less than two weeks. So pray for this um, for this time of ministry and pray that um, we will be able to transform this nation through uh, the gathering of the intercessors. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. So I want some powerful person to close us up in prayer who wants to close us up in prayer praise the lord let me leave that to a volunteer this time father in the name of jesus we just bless you we worship you we adore you we love you lord how great you are how good you are my heart is just full of your goodness oh god mm -hmm. because with your correction oh god you correct sons you correct daughters you correct the people you love oh lord you correct those you have commissioned father thank you for the correction thank you for for the encouragement thank you for the thrusting us out oh god a lot of us yes um some have rested some are on the job some are just like tired but yeah. this this three days you've done amazing things everyone Amen. has been touched everyone Amen. if we had the room to give testimonies of what yeah. you have changed in us what the renewal of mind the yes, the, the sharpening of, of vision of focus the, the the realignment i could go on and on but lord you know i'm just full of gratitude I, I want us to go out in this month with a bang of Amen. praises of of just like re-energized oh lord not just a, a a false a false thing of okay yeah i can do this and then we flop no this is different lord i know it and i feel it in my spirit Amen. and i know we'll all go out and see things new do things new and, and just be aligned to your purposes in our lives. Thank you, Father. I bless you, Lord. I worship you. I bless every woman. I bless you. I bless your homes. I bless your endeavors. Amen. I bless your thoughts. Amen. I bless your mind. Amen. I bless everything that you will put your hand into. And I say in the name of Jesus, you begin to see profiting daily, yes, Lord. daily, yes. daily. Daily, I speak that forth because in that profiting that you see, even before you close your eyes in the night to sleep, you will have something tangible to say, Lord, I thank you for this yes. every day in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Please let me let me Amen. let me just say this before you leave. Thank you so much, Sister Fumi. She said something about correction, which I have to say it because this was a thing that was a problem for me with Miriam. I'm like how, you know, Miriam was always like a bad person before Prophet Sadi said that. So like, you know, the leprosy thing and stuff like that. <laughs> and then before Prophet Sadi said, so the mantle of Miriam, I'm like, ah. But now the Lord showed me when I was saying it, Miriam is the only one who had leprosy and it never went to her. It was a correction and a discipline of the Lord. The Bible says he disciplines those he loves. Basically, he, he, he was showing because this woman was highly anointed. Just like Moses, he was not able to go to the, to the promised land because of his disobedience. But he disciplines those he loves. So don't consider Miriam like someone who deviated and became, no, 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 no. She, ha she had a moment of short-sightedness and the Lord disciplined her because he loves her. She's the only one who had leprosy that did not, did not stay with her in the Bible, you know, that did not, le leprosy that was caused by judgment, other people's leprosy, Jesus healed, but leprosy that was caused by judgment, all of them died with the leprosy, and it went to their generation, it never happened for Miriam that way, she was leprous for seven days, she was healed, and she went back to ministry, and when the Lord showed me that, I was so relieved, I was like, okay, <laughs> 
Thank you, Lord. The Lord is going to discipline those he loves. And even right now, as his conviction is coming into your heart, that is part of his discipline. So walk with him. Let him bring forth the correction and be restored to your to the glory of the Lord that is over your life. God Amen. bless you. We love you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Bless everyone. Have a blessed month. Bless you, Dr. Wilson, everyone. Bye. Have a blessed Bye. week. Blessed month. Bye. Bye. See Amen. you next month. Yeah. Amen. 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 Amen.